Dave Do Hansen. we know these songs? I mean, we just know. That one. Love me. It beyond. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Good morning. Welcome this morning to worship here at Epworth United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Dane Zacherson and I'm glad to welcome you in the name of Christ. We have a couple of announcements this morning that I would draw to your attention. <clears throat> On Tuesday night, uh, we have our regular monthly open table meal, and so that is a, a community meal. Um, the banner should be out uh, later today. Uh, to welcome people to that on Tuesday. And so we invite you to come and to share. Are we going with the plan, Anita? Is that the plan for the same plan for the food? Yep. Beef stew is what we're going to have. So we invite you to come and share in a meal. You can come and eat together or take it to go. Uh, either is acceptable. And so we invite you to partake of that on Tuesday. Uh, uh, there is a note in the bulletin. We have, uh, uh, because of fears over COVID, we have canceled our bazaar. Uh, for um, it would have it would have been cut this coming week. Uh, we still have hopes to potentially uh, reschedule that, but at this point we are uh, it, it is on hold, and uh, we will uh, continue to to be in touch with uh, plans down the road. Are there any other announcements this morning that I'm neglecting? Our sermon series has been uh, based somewhat on the book. Courage by Tom Berlin, uh, and so the, uh, we have talked about some of the, the pieces that are necessary uh, for courage, for uh, living a brave faith. Uh, we have talked about clarity, we have talked about conviction, and today we will talk about candor. Are we truthful? Are we honest? Are we forthright uh, with our faith? And so this morning we will talk about the candor of courage. One more. We celebrate our life together and take part in these ministries so that we might make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Thanks be to God. Our connection question this morning asks, other than your spouse, who do you trust to tell you the truth? If you ask them a question about uh, about uh, something you have done or what you're wearing or, uh, you know, the, the classic question, does this dress make me look fat? Um, my daughter continues to refer to my robe as my dress. So uh, I can ask that question as well. And so that's the question this morning. 
other than your spouse, who do you trust to tell you the truth? I invite you to stand and greet your neighbor. Good morning. My name is Jackie Owen, and I'm glad to serve as a reader today. For those of you worshiping online, a bulletin can be found on our webpage if you would like to follow along as we worship together. Let's join in our call to worship. Blessed are those who walk in God's way. God makes them like trees planted by streams of water. I invite you to remain standing as we join in our opening song, which will appear up there and on the screen. One day in your house, better is 
Please be seated. Please be seated as we join our voices, asking God to be present with us this day. Let's pray together. God of unquenchable fire and overflowing grace, cast out the demons that oppress us. Take away the things that make us stumble. Lead us into your realm of life and season us with your peace. In the name of Christ our Lord, Amen. As we gather together each Sunday, we share our joys. How good is it to have a praise team back? It's all due to Bill walking in. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the conversation was quite amusing as, as they recruited one another this morning. So uh, we, do, we are glad to, be, uh, to, ha to have this piece of our, our worship back. Lord, in our joy. Uh, we do, um, uh, talking with uh, those who are engaged in directly pulling in the produce of the land, we are in the, the midst of soybean harvest, and we know there are many people who are out working. This is the harvest that always makes me the most nervous, because this is the harvest where uh, your, uh, people are already tired, and they're out in the combines, and they're out in the, in the trucks, and it gets late at night, and this is where injuries happen. So we continue to pray for the safety of those who are literally bringing in the produce of the earth. We say, Lord, in your mercy. It is a joy that we are, uh, it has been homecoming week at Valley City High School uh, and activities at uh, the schools. And I don't know, I saw dress like your dad and I saw dress like a teacher. I don't know what other, the other days were, uh, but I know they've had, a, they've had a great week of activities uh, here in Valley City. We say, Lord, in our joy. What other joys would you share this morning? Oh, Tanner has a joy. Tanner did say he was going to come up. I don't know why he waited, but... I had to keep talking. That would be the truth. As many of you know, I have been working towards uh, discovering my calling in camping ministry, and I am more than happy to announce that as of last week, I have accepted the site director position at Lake Lucerne Camp and Retreat Center in Wisconsin. I don't know when I will be starting. Um, it's kind of up in the air, but the goal is to be that starting that transition within the next month. And I could not, I have to thank all of you for being there with me every step of the way and supporting me and uplifting me in my calling to ministry. Thank you. Lake Lucerne is a United Methodist camp. And uh, Tanner will be beginning the process. Um, uh, he, I'm going to make it public, so he has to now. Uh, beginning the process of working toward ordination as a deacon in the United Methodist Church, out of this congregation and within the Dakota's Conference, but in, in uh, recognizing that part of his calling as well. And so we say, Lord, in our joy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We have a number of concerns that we would share as well. Uh, we want to continue to lift up those who serve our communities as firefighters, as EMTs, and in uh, that uh, piece of the first response uh, in our communities, it has been, uh, it remains uh, a difficult time with illness and with injury. And so we say, Lord, in your mercy. We want to lift up all those who are dealing with COVID-19, who are uh, dealing with the illness and those who provide care, those who are providing vaccination as our community continues to seek out vaccination. We say, Lord, in your mercy. 
We lift up those who are dealing with cancer and its treatments. We remember especially Pat and Duane, Sue, Jan, Howie, and others who we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Want to lift up Karen Fries, who is a, a newer member of our worshiping congregation. Uh, Karen has come to worship several times. Uh, she is in a hospital in Fargo. She's had some uh, symptoms that appear to be that of a stroke. Um, but she texted me uh, where she was and how she was sorry to be missing church and, and uh, asked for your prayers as she continues to recover uh, in Fargo. We say, Lord, in your mercy. Are there others who we would lift up this day? Okay. All right. Okay, jo Joanna Horsager, who is Justin's sister, um, she has been in the hospital on bed rest for several weeks now. The 28th of September was the, was the date, target date they had, that if they, could, if they could allow the baby to continue to develop until the 28th. That is coming up this week. <laughs> and so we continue to lift up Joanna, and hopefully next Sunday we'll have, uh, we'll have a joy to share as well. But continue to keep Joanna and all of her family in your prayers. Lord, in your mercy. Don doesn't even know this. Um, Reese is back in the ER. Um, they both have COVID. They both had been vaccinated. And just their prayers. Okay. Ashley and Reese are, they both have COVID. They've been vaccinated, but Reese is yeah. back in the ER yeah, for, the with, time, yeah. for the second time with breathing issues. And so we lift up Ashley and Reese and their family. Lord, in your mercy. There are always concerns that seem too great or too small to share aloud, and yet we lift them before the throne of our God. Let us spend some time in individual prayer. Almighty God, you have called us to live out a faith of courage. Guide our hearts now as we pray for one another gathered with us this day, and as we pray for the one who is seated on our right. And as we pray for one who is seated on our left. Let us pray for one who is worshiping with us online. And let us pray for one who is not present with us this day. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who has rescued us from those who would destroy us. Your power and might are great, and your mercy is poured out on us. We have been entrusted with the way of life, for your word has dwelt among us. But we become so puffed up with our own importance that we ignore the simplest acts of mercy. You have called us to be like salt, adding flavor to life, yet we lose our sense of mission and cease to be all you have called us to be. 
Deliver us from judgment and forgive our sin, that we may live forever in your presence and praise you for eternity. By the gift of your Spirit, help us to see that we share your task of evangelism with many people from many different places. May our work be done for the common purpose of spreading the gospel of Christ. We lift up before you this day our brothers and sisters who are in distress. By the ministry of your grace and love, we have confidence that as your will directs, you will deliver them from evil, preserve them in all goodness, and bring them to everlasting life. O oh God, turn our sorrow into gladness and our mourning into a holiday. Hear and answer us, for we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The story of Esther reminds us of God's continued care for God's people, using leaders from unexpected backgrounds for such a time as this. Esther 7, 1 to 6, 9 to 10, and chapter 9, 20 to 22. So the king and Haman went into a feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, what is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you, and what is your request? Even to half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, if I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. And the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and also the 15th day of the same month year by year as the days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The word of the Lord. James encourages those who are sick to seek healing through the power of God. James 5, 13 to 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. 
Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. As we sing Jesus Loves Me, I invite the children to come forward. Good morning. It's been kind of an exciting week in the pastor's office, and not in a good way. Have you ever had a picture fall off the wall? Yeah. It's, sometimes it can break the picture, right? Yeah. Well, something worse happened in my office. Yeah. A picture fell off the wall, and it broke something that wasn't mine. My grandma, Camille's great grandma, has moved into a, a different apartment, and so she gave away all of her bells. She had collected bells for 50 years, and Camille, I don't know if you know this, Camille loves elephants. And so Camille has been watching my grandma's elephant bell for years, saying, Grandma, I need your elephant bell. And she got her elephant bell, and look what happened. Yeah, it fell and it broke. And you know what my first thought was? My first thought was, well, if I glue it right, or maybe if I go online and buy a replacement, I won't have to tell Camille her bell broke, right? But is that truthful? No, that's not honest. But I really struggled. I really had a hard time because I felt really bad because I broke Camille's bell. Yeah. And it had been easier, it had been more comfortable to not tell the truth. But I felt guilty enough because I knew I was going to talk about preaching on the truth that I had to tell Camille. And she cried and we cried together and you can tell when I glue it back together we'll still tell it was broken. But it's still the elephant bell that her great grandma owned. And so it's still important to her. And so the right thing to do was to tell the truth, wasn't it? That can be hard. Sometimes it's hard to tell the truth. It's hard when we are supposed to be honest, but that's what Jesus wants us to be. Even when it's hard, he wants, to tell us, wants us to tell the truth, right? Yeah. Would you pray with me? Dear God, help us to tell the truth even when it's difficult. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, there's a few treats over there. You can head back to your seats. Our song of preparation is You Are My All in All.
as we are uh, kind of restoring th some things, I was going to say to the praise team, if you want to go take your seats, you're okay to do that because it's weird to, to have somebody preach from behind you. Lance and Marion are, are used to it. <laughs> Church musicians get used to strange things. But our scripture this morning comes to us from Mark's gospel. We have been talking about uh, the courage of our faith, uh, living a brave faith, and uh, we are continuing in Mark's gospel uh, with actually some, some difficult passages this morning. So uh, we are in the gospel of Mark in the ninth chapter. Listen for the word of God. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was, was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no, we, no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it will be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The candor of courage. Candor is a word we don't talk much, we don't use much anymore. We're more familiar with talking about it as candid. Is someone candid? Is someone honest and truthful and, and sharing their true perceptions of the world around them? Are we willing to have candor especially when it comes to important matters. I mean, one of the places we want candor is when there is, when there is a failure in the body of Christ. And I can tell you this very day, there is a failure in the body of Christ in a community of faith not far from here. They're going to commit an honest-to-goodness sacrilege. It is a form of heresy because they are going to serve sauerkraut with their turkey. What kind of a choice is that? That just seems so wrong and so just, just, just wrong. <laughs> Although I'm told it's delicious. <laughs> so what do I know? But we have those places, right? And sometimes it's dealing with food. Sometimes it's dealing with, with uh, 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 maybe a sports team or our opinions. We have those places where we have no problem being candid. Sharing candor, sharing with, with truthful and honesty, sharing where, what we believe. And there are times we step back and, and step away and are afraid, maybe of sharing our faith or, or sharing the faith, our, our, the choices our faith instructs us to make. It's difficult to know when to be candid, when it is important to share the depth of what we believe, of who we are. Jesus is candid in this passage. He is talking about the difficulty of, of someone who would, who would share opinions that make people lose their faith. He says it would be better if they were given a heavy weight and thrown into the ocean than to pull people away from Christ. This is a painful image. This is something out of The Sopranos or out of a, a gangster movie out of the 40s. Tie him to a stone and throw him off a pier, right? And yet, what he's talking about, what he's being honest about is that the most important piece is our 
faith. Not from what place do we get it? Because this is almost a, almost a multi-denominational moment that Jesus is talking about here, is talking in the response to, right? John comes up and says, Jesus, there are people we don't know who are using your name to do good things. Should we go stop them? Because we don't know them. And we say, okay, that seems ridiculous, right? Because we know we are a church of Christ, but we are not the only church of Jesus Christ. We trust that even though at St. Mary's they're going to serve sauerkraut with their turkey today, we do trust that these are good Christian men and women, misguided though they be, <laughs> that they are doing work. They are doing good work to fulfill the mission of Christ. And even though we might not understand all of, their, all of the choices they make, not just in, in a fundraiser menu, but different practices, different liturgies, different, different ways of living out their faith, we trust. We trust that the Spirit of Christ is alive in them as well and that they are participating in ministries in many ways, including supporting the backpack program, the same backpack program we support, they support at Barnes County North. We trust that together we are doing, we are doing the work of Christ, regardless of those disagreements we might have. And so Jesus says to the disciples, no, 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 no. If they're doing it in my name, <laughs> it's all good. It's all right. Jesus is honest with them that the name of Christ will will make a difference, not only in their lives, but in the lives of those to whom they are reaching out. But then, but then Jesus goes on and talks about this, this painful idea of if you have something in your life that is bringing you against the faith of Christ, <laughs> get rid of it. If your hand is causing you to sin, cut it off. If your eye is causing take care of that or cut off your foot. He is being honest about the fact that if we would follow Christ, it takes all of us individually and all of us working together to work for Christ. That, that candor is that what we do must be all together for the people of God and the people in the world. We have to be willing to be candid. We have to be willing to be honest, not only about why we're doing, but what we are doing for those in need, for those who are far from God, for those who are struggling in pain, in want. You see, the candor of courage causes us not only to be honest with those outside, but with those inside, the people of God and say, we do this because we are called to do this. We gather in ministry together, not just because it makes us feel good, <laughs> but we have this commandment from Christ to feed and to care and to work with those who are vulnerable. But it's difficult to know sometimes what candor looks like. I love the fact that in, the, in his book, Courage, Tom Berlin kind of lays out some of the steps and some of the requirements of candor and I actually have a list in front of me. I may actually have to go to my, to my list today to, to remember all the pieces. But the first one I have no trouble with because one of the important statements is candor is not ugliness. Being honest with someone is never meant, should never cause pain, candor is not ugliness. I've been thinking about my dad a lot this week, and my dad struggled with this line his whole life, because he liked to, he felt a strong calling in his own life to live out a life of faith, and he did so. But sometimes when talking to others about faith, or talking to others about relationships, he was where he thought he was being candid, he was being ugly. 
think of one story in particular where a young woman who had been a part of our community her whole life, but had always struggled as an adopted child feeling welcomed and feeling a part of the community, she had come home from New York with, with a fiancé, and the family wasn't quite sure how they felt, with, felt about this fiancé. They weren't, it wasn't who they had expected. And my dad, aware of, of this upset and uncertainty, greeted this young man with, oh, so you're the jerk that everybody's talking about. I witnessed this. This is, he thought he was being candid. He was being ugly. He felt that call to be honest. What he might have said, he might have said it differently. He said it's so pleasant. <laughs> he could have said it's nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you, <laughs> which would have been true. And I've been struggling over this last week now to think of what he could have said <laughs> that would have been candid and yet not, not just a platitude. But that's who he had chosen to be in his life. And so candor is not ugly. So how are we? How, are, how do we share with candor? We have, to, we have to use caution. We have to be careful when we approach these situations where we feel candor is needed. And we begin, in the best cases, with a place of agreement, with a place where we stand together. To say to someone, I understand and I love the fact that we are in this ministry together, that we are in this community together. Isn't it great to come to a football game? Begin with a place of agreement so that you're not attacking someone as you are being candid. And then focus on the issue. You're not a, you don't want to attack a person, but you want to share where you believe you diverge in the understanding of the issue, especially when dealing with faith. Oh, I just can't, I don't understand. My church doesn't do this or doesn't, doesn't participate in this way. And so you're focusing on the issue, not on the person. And then as you go on, you give people room. Rather than attacking, you have a conversation of questions. Why are you, tell me why you are struggling with caring for immigrants in our community. Tell me why you are struggling with the, the conversations about race that we are having as a society. Tell me about why you struggle with, with fill in the contentious issue. Make it not about defending, but about sharing mutually together. Because you have to remember that the goal, even in candid situations, even in candid conversations, the goal is always to share out of the grace and mercy and love of Jesus Christ. And so, when you are in a place, when a place where you can be honest, to conclude with a blessing. Not just a, oh, you believe that, I believe this will be done. You know, you be you, or... Oh, there's a phrase I'm forgetting that, that pops in and out of my head all the time. I guess we'll agree to disagree. No. This is not pleasant. This is you're still wrong. But to conclude with a blessing. To say, I still love being in ministry with you. I still love what, how you are understanding the will of Christ. I still understand how you can love your neighbor. Because you have to remember, we have... To stand with the vulnerable. We have to stand with those who are in a special need of God's love and care. Those who are sick, those who are hurting, those who are lost. It's difficult. It's difficult to be candid and it's maybe more difficult to be on the other side of candor. I was blessed this week when someone was candid with me. Can you hear it in my voice this morning? As I talk more, I have a little bit of a speech impediment coming back. And it's been off and on for the last six months. And it was really bad in Bible study today. And somebody had the courage to say, Pastor, you need to see a doctor about that. You need to, to call somebody for a neurological consult. 
Now, I've known I'm crazy for a long time, but someone was candid with me because, <laughs> because they had love for me. And quite honestly, this person said, I tried to figure out a way to do it last week and I couldn't, and then you wouldn't shut up about courage of, of telling the truth today, and so I have to say to you, <laughs> you need to see a doctor. My MRI is the 13th, okay? <laughs> That's the next step. Because the goal, the goal is always to share the grace and mercy and love of Jesus Christ. If we would live out a brave faith, we have to be willing to say those words that might be difficult, that might be uncomfortable, that certainly might not be North Dakota nice, but that call us to honesty in the service of the gospel. Let us go from this place knowing that we serve a Christ of truth, of love, and of grace. That we may be honest about who we serve and why we serve our God and who we are called to be. Go forth from this place with a candor of courage. Amen. We have multiple ways to respond to God's blessing in this week. One of the opportunities I invite you to share is to share with our ministries here, either online or uh, with a uh, continuing gift through an EFT, or we have offering plates on your way in and out of our sanctuary. Let us contemplate how we can offer ourselves and our lives in response to God's word. Would you stand for our doxology, our hymn of praise to God? Gracious and holy God, we ask that you bless the gifts of our hands, the gifts of our time and talent, that you use them to build up your kingdom in this place and throughout the earth, that all might be transformed through your incredible grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen. As we uh, invite the praise team to return to the front, this is one of my favorite hymns. You can sing it. The English will be on the screen. You can sing it in Spanish if you pick up your hymnal. You are the seed.
Would you join me in our breakthrough prayer? Dear God, unleash in us your bold, limitless spirit. Help us to break free from where we are and lead us to where you want us to go. Call us to risk, call us to change, call us to follow your good news. Amen. Now go forth in the name of Christ to serve your neighbor in all that you do, to be courageous to be honest, to be loving. Go forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.